ESPN is coming to town on Monday night for Monday Night Football, and the leader of NFL Live will be on the sideline for the telecast, Laura Rutledge. Laura, just like last year, the Bengals are off to an 0-2 start. What do you and your ESPN colleagues make of it? I picked the Bengals to be in the Super Bowl, so I, I still think it's going to happen, and I'm going to stick to that. Uh, but they got to get things turned around here quick, and maybe Monday Night Football is the stage for all that to happen on. But you know, the one thing I would point out is is we feel like the first game, because of the rain and, and just bad weather, you almost throw that one out. Last week, I think they played a lot better than it looked like uh, and, and a lot better than maybe the box score would show. And I know that sounds sort of typical of, oh, there's more to it than just the box score. But I think specifically when it comes to this Bengals team, you're seeing a lot more signs of life offensively and a lot more signs that Joe Burrow is getting more comfortable than maybe it appeared based on, on the points. I am admittedly biased, but I feel like the Bengals' defense doesn't get the attention it deserves. Do you agree? I do. Um, I will say on NFL Live, we love the Bengals' defense, and we love Lou Anarumo as their defensive coordinator. I think he is, and the numbers back this up, as a defensive coordinator and as a defense as a whole, they are one of the absolute best when it comes to second half adjustments. And, um, you know, I don't know if people realize, but half times in the NFL are not that long. <laughs> and they're able to very quickly identify things. I mean, this game, you know, you see so many offenses able to do things and the defense has to adjust. It's kind of just the way it's going to go. They are able to adjust better than any other team. And I, I just think that's such a, a valuable uh, trait to have as a defense. And it all starts with Lou Anarumo. So I agree. I think this defense probably doesn't get enough credit. And, um, you know, they're, they're going to be, listen, this Rams offense is playing really well right now. And Matthew Stafford might be playing the best at the quarterback position of anybody so far this season. So they're going to have their work cut out for them. But I, I believe they will give the Rams far more difficult game than any of their opponents have given them thus far this season. And I just think most offenses say we really don't want to face that Bengals defense, which is probably the biggest compliment you could actually get in the NFL. Laura, we are two weeks into the season. There are two undefeated teams left in the AFC, Miami and Baltimore. That's it. What do you make of the other 14 having at least one loss? I tell you what, uh, the AFC is just tough sledding. And, you know, that's one of the reasons why I do think this game this week is so crucial for the Bengals because you just can't be having three losses, you know, um, this early in the season. And and they're, I still believe that they're such a talented team. There's so much um, still left for them. And so I, I want them to to go ahead and start winning here because I think I think they have the ability to potentially make it all the way. It's just a matter of how do you get past some of these ridiculously talented teams. And, uh, you know, I think what we're seeing is it, you, you look over to the NFC side and you say, well, yeah, you know, teams probably afford a few more losses here and there because there's still going to be a shot there down the stretch. That's just not the case with this the strength of the AFC and uh, it's going to be fascinating to see who comes out on top as, as the AFC representative in the Super Bowl. But even when it comes to the playoffs, you know, you look around and, and I don't know, by that point, you know, I, I think Miami and I, I do think Baltimore will still be really good. But I don't know that we'd be saying like, oh, yeah, remember when those were the only two teams that didn't have a loss in, in this side of the league. As far as just stacked rosters and talent goes, the AFC is a behemoth at this point. So for people who have not watched the Rams so far, they dominated Seattle on the road in week one. They outgained the 49ers, but lost by seven in week two. Here's the question. Who the heck is Puka Nakua, and why can't anybody cover the guy? Yeah, I'm glad you asked about Puka Nakua because, um, I mean, what a story, man. It, so far this season, he's already setting records. You know, he's doing all these things that you just don't expect to see out of rookies in general. But... For a guy that was just so unheralded, it's it's fascinating to see. And, you know, it's all a product of different things, right? So the fact that Cooper Cup hasn't been available, they've had to work their offense in different ways. And Puka Nakua, you know, everything you throw at him, he catches it and he, he figures out a way to sort of like barrel forward. He's such a sturdy player. Uh, that may sound weird, but 
it's just like, you know, he, he's not going to wow you size wise or traits wise, but he just makes things happen. And I expect more of the same out of him. I think uh, Lou Anarumo probably have some things cooked up for him. But like I said, I, I do think this Bengals defense gives a far more challenging outlook for, for this Rams offense than the two opponents they've already faced. So Puka's new Aaron Donald is not. He's 32. He is presumably nearing the end of his Hall of Fame career. When it's done, what will football people say about Aaron Donald? I think he's the standard for that position. And when you think about just fierce, tenacious defensive linemen, um, guys that quarterbacks have nightmares about, that would be Aaron Donald. And and I think if you're somebody in that position, that's exactly how you want to be thought of and remembered uh, when it's all said and done. And, you know, the athleticism with which he plays the position is impressive. And uh, the skill set is there, obviously, the size, all the things. But I think it's it's his mentality, it's his laser focus on the quarterback that no matter what, he's going to get there. And um, no matter the opponent, you know, he's been able to do that. He's just such a force. It, it'll be one that we all look back on and say, okay, that's a name that you associate with one of the best at, at the D-line position. Monday night's going to be special. The Bengals will be wearing their white Bengal uniforms. The Ring of Honor ceremony is coming up at halftime. The jungle is going to be rocking. What are some of the keys to the Bengals and Rams on Monday night? you got to limit Fuka Nakua on the other side and force Matthew Stafford in a situation to where they really have to uh, make something happen in the pass game. You know, he can do that, but they, they do rely a lot on the run game. So, you know, try to limit that, try to get him feeling some pressure that may not even be there, which I think Anarumo has a lot of things cooked up his sleeve where um, he should be able to do that. And then, you know, I would just say, I think this one's going to be back and forth throughout. I think we're going to see a lot of offense. So it, it may really be like who gets the last laugh there. Um, and, and that's where you've just got to score in the red zone. So I sound like a football coach because I'm like, okay, so protection, limit turnovers, make sure you score in the red zone. But truly in this game, <laughs> I think those are the keys. We are really looking forward to having ESPN in town and we appreciate your time today. Thank you, Laura. Thanks, Dan. I appreciate you guys.